Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. First day of February and plenty of interesting weather to talk about for the next 10 days and beyond, depending of course on your definition of the word interesting. For the time being, you might say it's not that interesting in the south. We've got high pressure keeping things largely dry. Much of the weather is taking place further north because of an active jet stream bringing spells of wind and rain, especially to northern Scotland. That's really how things are going to continue during the rest of the week. High pressure remains close to the south and lower pressure crosses close to the north, bringing a succession of weather fronts, bringing further spells of rain and often blustery conditions. The wettest weather will be across western Scotland, especially the northwest highlands, brought in by these warm fronts. But elsewhere, actually, the warm fronts will help to bring a lot of cloud across the country. So still a few spots of rain over western hills further south, but nothing significant in the south. And there will be some brightness coming through at times as well. What the warm fronts will help to do is bring much milder air across the whole of the UK. We've got the winds coming in from the west southwest and these warm fronts, a number of them, bringing increasingly mild weather in, sometimes something a little colder, for example first thing Friday coming into the far north, but otherwise the general trend is for these warm fronts to bring increasingly mild air up and down the country well above average temperatures, 13 Celsius in places by Friday afternoon in the south and the east as well. And even in the colder spots, still eight or nine Celsius, still above average for the time of year, even where across Western Scotland, it is raining all day on Thursday, for example. It will also be changing. As we head into the weekend, a frost-free start because of all that mild air in place. And then once again, a generally cloudy day, a few spots of rain over Western Hills, but 12, 13 Celsius still possible across parts of Eastern England and Southern England, for example. Meanwhile, a spell of rain arrives across Scotland and Northern Ireland with this cold front sinking south that reaches central areas through the evening and overnight. Colder air then pushes south, but also clearer conditions and with clearer skies and that colder air in place on Saturday night, a widespread frost to wake up to on Sunday. So a complete contrast with Saturday morning. Sunday morning starts off chilly, but also much brighter. Plenty of sunshine breaking out, especially across England, Wales, into southern and eastern Scotland with higher pressure extending north once again. Temperatures back to average, but for some, it might feel like a more pleasant day with crisp winter sunshine rather than the grey leaden skies. Towards the northwest, we will have grey skies, some outbreaks of rain arriving with this warm front. And there's another cold front coming along, which is a slowly approaching. And actually, if we run the Met Office computer model forward through the rest of Sunday and into the start of next week, what you can see is the influence of that high pressure begins to wane. It starts to push into the continent. And this cold front approaches and really the isobars begin to tighten. We've got this westerly airflow and a gradual return to more changeable weather from the Atlantic, spells of rain and wind, and uh, something more like average or above average in terms of the temperatures. But that's just one computer model run. And of course, we don't just look at one computer model run here at the Met Office, we look at many. And by this stage, they're all starting to say different things. So this is the Met Office computer model run by midnight on Monday into Tuesday. And it's got that front, that cold front across central areas. It's got the Atlantic driven weather returning. And it's got this cold air sinking south across Eastern Europe. But watch what happens if I switch to the American model, in particular this cold air. It ends up across southern and eastern parts of the UK. And this is next Monday night, same time period. The front I mentioned is much further northwest, still bringing some rain, still bringing some mild air and southwesterly winds to Scotland and Northern Ireland. But England and Wales, colder and drier. Now, it looks likely, depending on which model run you look at, that we're going to see things remain relatively cold and dry compared to average across southern and southeastern parts of the UK into the start of next week. But the big difference is whether we see this much colder east of the airflow or a return, a gradual return, to westerlies. And the European computer model has something in between. It's got higher pressure sitting close to the south, so it's mostly dry, it's average temperatures or perhaps some overnight frosts, etc., or slightly below average temperatures by day, and it's got that milder but more changeable weather in the northwest. 
it's something in between, basically, the Metalvis model and the American model. So when you've got these three different ideas, which one to believe? Well, that's when we look at all the different ensemble computer model runs from each of these models. We don't just run the European model or the American model once, they are run many times. And here's a snapshot of Tuesday night showing the temperature across northern and northwestern parts of Europe. There's the UK in the middle on each of these what we call postage stamps. It's a snapshot for next Tuesday night with the temperature. So greens for mild air, blues for cold air. I don't expect you to be able to interrogate each of these at uh, the uh, size that they're on, they are on screen. But basically, this is just to give you an idea of the various different uh, uh, solutions for next Tuesday night. And some of these from the European model have the cold air into the southeast. For example, 26 there, member 23, member 35. But Many more have milder air coming in from the Atlantic. In fact, we've actually counted these up. There's about 10% of them that show the cold air, 90% or so that show milder air returning. Now, the American model, which is the main computer model one that had the much colder air coming in from the east, that shows slightly more of its ensemble computer model runs giving the cold solution. It's around 30%, and here's a snapshot for the same time with the greens in, in many of them, but more of these blues coming in from the continent. And again, you can see the angle at which that cold air is coming in. It's coming in from the southeast. So it's towards the southeast of the UK, where if this happened, it would be colder, and it's towards the northwest, where it wouldn't be quite as cold in this kind of situation. So why are these big differences? Well, it can all be traced back to the weather over the next few days. And this huge area of cold air across North America, of course, that's coming up against milder air to the south. And where we get that, we get a powerful jet stream. And a powerful jet stream helps to deepen areas of low pressure, which is indeed what's happening through Thursday and Friday. This area of low pressure picked up by the jet stream deepens explosively. It becomes a real beast there coming out of North America. And that in turn, although that's deepened by the jet stream, the size of that low can also impact the shape of the jet stream and it helps to push its energy southwards there and northwards, amplifying the jet stream, making it more regularly across the Atlantic. And when that happens, then, well, it becomes a bit uncertain because very subtle differences in the shape and the depth of this low will have a knock-on impact in terms of how amplified the jet stream is. And then ultimately, by the start of next week, on the shape of the jet stream coming in over the top of the UK and helping to develop an area of low pressure that's heading into Greece in the Met Office model. And that's what happens. It's this area of low pressure we're watching closely. And the position of that low by the start of next week basically depends on the depth and the size of the area of low pressure that's coming out of North America because of the interaction between the very, very cold air across Canada and the subtropical air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. So those subtle changes over the next couple of days will diverge and have big differences by the time we get to the start of next week. And that will ultimately decide how much of this cold air stays to the east of the UK and how much it will influence the UK itself. And that's why we end up with these two different solutions. The Met Office idea where we get westerlies returning through next week after a cold and dry start towards the south and east or the American model where we get the easterlies coming in. That's got the low not over Greece, but over Italy. So that subtle difference in the position of the low will, do, will drive the cold air either towards the UK or southwards across Eastern Europe. That's what it all comes down to. So what we think at the moment is there's an 85% chance that next week will start off colder and drier in the south but milder with some rain in the north, and then gradually through next week, with some uncertainties about how quickly it will happen, westerlies sinking south, bringing changeable but milder air across the UK. That's an 85% chance. But there's a 15% 15 chance that it will turn very cold, especially in the south and the east, with snow in places. So it's a one in six. It's a throw of the dice. If you get a six, that's the solution. Five times out of six, though, it's more likely to, uh, well, be average, if not above average, temperatures by the end of next week. 
we don't just look at computer model runs though, we look at teleconnections. Teleconnections are features of the weather elsewhere across the world that can have a knock-on effect on the UK's weather. I won't go into the specifics of what each of these mean, but we have mentioned them in the past. There are explainers for each of these on the Met Office YouTube channels. But one thing that we've been keeping an eye on is the stratospheric polar vortex, this powerful ring of winds surrounding the North Pole in the stratosphere. That has weakened, but it's not expected to have an influence on the UK's weather in the next couple of weeks. Despite the potential for colder weather, that's not being driven by the stratospheric polar vortex. And if anything, that vortex is getting stronger, which tends to mean that westerly winds then from the Atlantic are favoured in a couple of weeks' time. Likewise, tropical rainfall. This is something known as the Madden Julian oscillation. The swings and roundabouts of tropical rainfall on the other side of the world can influence our weather. And that also is in a phase at the moment that would favour westerly winds for the next couple of weeks. And finally, La Nina. This is a phase of sea surface temperatures in the Pacific. You might have heard of El Nino. This is the opposite phase, La Nina. This would also favour westerly winds uh, during the next couple of weeks. None of these are guaranteed to have an impact on our weather. They just increase the likelihood they, well, go back to the dice analogy. They help load the dice towards more westerly, more typical weather for the UK and not easterly winds. But, like I said, they're not guaranteed to have an impact. And the variable combinations of different highs and lows are also important when it comes to the UK weather. And that's why it's still possible to get an easterly when those uh, factors favour westerlies and why there's a 15% chance of this happening for next week. And what I would say is that if this 15% chance happens, well, sometimes it's difficult to shift very cold air. So we would expect a slower return to westerlies, even if those other things all around the world are favouring westerly winds for later in the month. But, of course, we'll keep you updated as and when we get more clarity on what's happening. And you can follow all those updates on social media.